Welcome to our Memorial Day service at Greenwood United Methodist Church in Greenwood, Florida, via YouTube and live audience. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, may this service together with Memorial Day thoughts and prayers everywhere help move our world one step closer to the peace of your kingdom. We make this prayer to you through Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace and Lord. Amen. My message today is coming from Daniel chapter 5, the whole chapter, verses 1 through 31. Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 through 31. And scripture states, King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God now in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles and his wives and his concubines drank from them. And as they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. I can imagine I'd be pretty frightened to see something like that myself. The king summoned the enchanters, the astrologers, and diviners. Then he said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tell me what it means, will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar became even more terrified and his face grew more pale. His nobles were baffled. The queen, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles came into the banquet hall. May the king live forever, she said. Do not be alarmed. Do not look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. He did this because Daniel, whom the king called Belshazzar, was found to have a king mind and knowledge and understanding and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he would tell you what the writing means. So Daniel was brought before the king, and the king said to him, Are you Daniel? One of the exiles my father, the king, brought from Judah. I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you and that you have sight, intelligence, and outstanding wisdom. The wise men and enchanters were brought before me to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they could not explain it. Now I have heard that you are able to give interpretations and to solve difficult problems. If you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around your neck and you will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered the king, you may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. 
your majesty, the most high God, gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor because of the high position he gave him all nations and all people of every language dreaded and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. Those he wanted to promote, he promoted. And those he wanted to humble, he humbled. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was disposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven from the people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like the ox. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign over all kingdoms of the earth and sets them anyone, over them anyone that he wishes. But you, but you, Belshazzar, his son, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from his temple brought to you and your nobles, your wife and your concubines, drink from them. You praise the God of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and all of your ways. Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. This is the inscription that was written. Mene, Mene, T.K. Parson. Mene, Mene, T.K. Parson. Here's what these words mean. Mene. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tiko, you have been weighed on the scale and found wanting. Parson, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar command, then at Belshazzar command, Daniel was clothed in purple. A gold chain was placed around his neck and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the land. Now listen to this. That very night, that very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom at the age of 62. This is the word of God for the people of God. My message today is titled, Memorial Day, the battle for the soul of our nation. Memorial Day, the battle for the soul of our nation. Let's get into this message. Memorial Day, a day set aside when we pause to remember those who laid down their lives for family, friends, and freedom. One week, one week, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, President Franklin D. Roosevelt said, those who long to enjoy such privileges that we enjoy, forget in time that others have died to win them. As such, it is often said, freedom is never really free. It is almost always brought with the price of blood. You see, the biggest battle for us as Americans that we're facing today is the battle for the soul of our nation. We see it all around us every day. The erosion of our society has been a slow process, but we have seen it accelerate rapidly in the last few years. The position we're in today is because we have tolerated yesterday. And the position we would be in tomorrow is because we of what we tolerate today. Well, know this, history has a way of repeating itself down through the centuries. In Daniel's day, he was a lot of what, a lot, a lot of what he saw is what we are seeing today. But the situation is much worse. You see, the fifth chapter of Daniel describes the collapse 
of a culture. They became so comfortable and secure within the confines of their strong wall, but they crumbled from within. They crumbled from within. The way I see it, Babylon made four huge mistakes. Mistake number one, they lost all of their remembrance. Mistake number two, they lost all sense of reality. Mistake number three, they lost all sense of restraint. And mistake number four, they lost all sense of respect. On this Memorial Day weekend, my prayer is that we will be challenged to be a people of repentance and that we would acknowledge that anything we do is vanity without the presence of the Holy Spirit. Belshazzar's problem was the same problem many people have today. He had forgotten some of the valuable lessons from the past, lessons from his own father, Nebuchadnezzar, and he learned it the hard way. Lessons like it stated in Daniel chapter 4, verses 37. Those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. You see, in most cases, pride always comes before destruction. Daniel gives us an important insight when he challenges the king with the accusation that you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. That is what Belshazzar was doing, boasting about himself. He picked up right where King Nebuchadnezzar, his father, left off. As stated in Daniel chapter 4, verse 30, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a war dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? He thought he did it all himself. Never thought about God. Pride always leads to a fall. Pride is right up there at the top of the list of those things which God despises the most. You see, in this country, in America, we used to honor God unashamedly. We used to honor God openly. In God we trust. It's etched in numerous monuments all over our nation's capital. In God we trust. It's carved in the granite on many of the government buildings we hold dear. In God we trust. It's printed on our currency. There was a time when we credited God with our blessings and our successes and turned to him in our trials and in our losses. But today, like Babylon, we seem to have lost our sense of remembrance. In many ways, we have forgotten our past. You see, America was settled by men and women who came here primarily looking for God. They came searching for a home where God could be exalted, where God could be worshiped in spirit, freedom, and in truth. Unfortunately, there are some sobering similarities between ancient Babylon and modern day America. And just like Babylon, there is an expensive price to pay when a nation loses all sense of remembrance of who they are and where they came from. You see, in order to understand how the king had lost all sense of reality around him, we need to remember that outside the city walls of Babylon, the Medes and the Persians surrounded the city. But inside, Belshazzar, him and all of his nobles, they're just part of it. They ain't worried about nothing. You see, the Babylonians thought that because of their history of dominance and their strong walls, that they were invincible, that they were indestructible. But everywhere you look beyond them, you can see the enemy surrounding the city. But no problem, they thought. After all, the walls were so high, the walls were so thick, they were impossible to penetrate. And guess what? They even had a 20 year supply of food snatched away inside. They weren't worried about nothing. So what did Belshazzar do? He lost all sense 
a reality. He threw a big party and invited thousands of guests when destruction was at his door. You see, when anyone begin to feel secure in their own strength, danger is just on the other side of the wall. This king was too blind and too drunk on his own success, realized that the spirit of the kingdom or any individual is never on the outside, but on the inside. Babylon soon fell because they had become corrupt on the inside with no more sense of remembering or no more sense of reality. You see, some people today foolishly think that somehow God needs America to carry out his plan on earth. After all, we have won all the world wars. The Cold War has long been over, and we seem to be the only real superpower still standing in the world today. But I believe God is saying to us today as best stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he also fall. The question, the question, why should we think that America is invincible? I think more than ever, it is time for us to remember who we are and where we have come from. I think it is time for us to look at the reality of what is going on around us and truly pray, God, forgive us, and God bless America. In Daniel chapter 5, we see the crumbling culture of Babylon. They abandoned all absolutes. There was no more restraints. There was no respect for anything. It was party time. Then an amazing thing happened. The fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite lamps on the lampstand on the plaster of the wall. The king quickly sobered up. His knees knocked against each other. Into the party comes Daniel. Now that's interesting. You know, most people do not want the man of God around when the liquor is flowing and the women are present. But when the writing is on the wall, when the crisis comes, they no longer want their immoral friends and drinking buddies. They start looking for someone who can help them out. As Daniel looked around, the shouting and the drinking and the sex had come to a stop. A strange silence filled the banquet hall. People looked as if they were frozen in time. The sacred vessels were scattered around the table. They was the only one in the room who was calm. Then Daniel did what every preacher should do. Daniel took God's word and without fear or favor, he simply revealed to them what God had said. Listen to Daniel as he stands before them. But before he interpreted the handwriting on the wall, he preached a sermon to them with three points, just three points. The first being, there was a word about power. Daniel reminded Belshazzar that King Nebuchadnezzar's power came from God. Second, there was a word about pride. Daniel reminded the king that Nebuchadnezzar lost his kingdom because of pride. And point number three, there was a word about punishment. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar was punished until he came to realize that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. Next, Daniel applied the text. You have not humbled yourself, although you knew all this, he said. King Belshazzar, you knew about the power, the pride, and the punishment. But sadly, you have lost all sense of remembrance. You have lost all sense of reality. You have lost all sense of restraint and respect. And when we forget these things, we become blind to the fact that like Babylon, our problems are not primarily political, economical, or social. The decline of any nation stems from spiritual factors. Everything else, Everything else is just symptomatic. Now back to this banquet. The hall is silent. 
Daniel never reveals the handwriting on the wall. Mene, Mene, T.K. Parson. These words reveal the elements involved in the sinner's destruction. Numbered, weighed, separated. Numbered, weighed, separated. In other words, your days are numbered. Judgment is coming. You will be separated from God for eternity. Now the ballroom scene is a scene of fright and terror. But there was one person who stood peacefully. He was not scared. Daniel was not concerned about his destiny because he knew the one. Daniel knew the one who had written on the wall. Chapter 5 of Daniel concludes with these words. That very night, that very night, never could, uh, Belshazzar was slain and Darius the Mede received the kingdom. That very night, while Babylon had parted with no sense of restraint, with no sense of remembrance, the armies of the Medes and the Persians diverted the Euphrates, Euphrates River to swampland and they marched right into the city through the dry riverbed that ran under the city walls and took the city. Notice, God's judgment is certain. There is not a wall high enough. There is not a wall thick enough to prevent a person or a nation from falling when God writes mene, mene, tika, per person. You see, who knows how close we might be to our number being called. Who knows how close we might be to facing God's judgment. One day we can know for sure is which side we will be on when God separates the sheep from the goats. You see, very few nations have had a history like the United States of America. For over 200 years, we have been a shining light to the world around us. We have been a launch pad to take the gospel literally to the very ends of the earth. We ought to hear people say, God is our only hope. But I wonder, but I wonder, if God might not, might not be our biggest threat. I say it again. I wonder if God might not be our biggest threat. In closing, there will be a last night for every nation. There will be a last night for every individual. Our days are indeed numbered. We need to have a sense of urgency in exchanging our own righteousness for the righteousness of Christ through the new birth that is only offered through salvation. So on this Memorial Day, on this Memorial Day 2021, as we remember those who gave so much for the freedoms that we enjoy today, we may be reminded that in the words of Daniel as stated in Daniel chapter four, verse 32, the most high, still rules over the affairs of men. And may we humble ourselves before him and may God continue to bless America. Perhaps, just perhaps my message touched someone in a way so special that you now want to give your life to Christ. And if you make this decision, then repeat this message with me and you will be saved. And you will be saved. If you just simply declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith, and you are saved in Jesus' name. And if you made this decision today, we rejoice with you and are excited about your choice to accept Christ into your life. And now as I bring this worship service to a close, Today is for remembering. Stand in honor of them. Walk in their path of duty. Remember the cost and hold it in your heart. The cause of freedom. We remember the day, Memorial Day 2021. Amen.